Okay, for a change, I am actually going to do GAC in a timely fashion. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. We got uh, TB, Luke came out today, so um, striking while the iron is hot, so to speak, and getting this video done within the same time. Uh, 24 hours of it actually having been done, which is not common. Usually my GACs are at least a week behind. Um, obviously, I won't release the video until this round of GAC is over, so still not going to be out for another few days, but I'm actually getting in front of it and recording as opposed to having a backlog of four or five GAC matches. We're back to 5v5 which is at this point far preferable to 3v3 for me anyway um my opponent um his name something stark Kerr stark or whatever uh he set both gls on d i guess that's much more common now that everyone not everyone but Far more people certainly have both uh, GLs. Um, this one, I've seen slightly different versions of this one with Malik in here. I have not seen a Malik stick ray before, um, so that's interesting. Uh, stick ray does a metric fuck ton of damage, so I absolutely get trying to put stick ray um somewhere on the map because she hits like a truck uh, in fact really everybody on this team hits like a truck whether it's finn malik poe or stick ray or ray herself um but enough about gak we don't come to these gak videos to actually talk about gak uh, and i've talked really ad nauseum about uh, Jedi Luke and some other things that have happened in the Swiggo community. I've talked a lot about the markets, talked a lot about Corona. Uh, we had that couple of weeks where we were talking about some very somber, very serious stuff about race relations in the United States. So what can we talk about now? Um, I wish I could talk about Naked and Afraid, but it's a new season, so it's kind of trickling in. So that's out for now. Um, genuinely not sure what to talk about. I guess we could talk about the market some more. Um, I feel like I've... <laughs> I honestly feel like I've gotten the most positive feedback from uh, videos wherein I talk about the markets, which is kind of funny, but I also like it because I like talking about the markets a lot. Um, I will say, uh, PSA, uh, I saw an article on CNBC about a very young 20-year-old uh, trader, amateur trader, of course, <clears throat> that ended up committing suicide because he believed, and we don't have all the facts, uh, but he believed that he had um, traded a lot of options on margin, which is borrowed money that you pay uh, interest on from whatever the investment house is. So I, I'm not sure if it's accurate or not, but he thought that he had lost, I believe, I can't remember if it was 170000 Yeah, I think it was like he believed he had lost $170,000 uh, on bad options trading, on bad margin options trading. Um, go to CNBC, you'll see the article. Um, so that brings up uh, several important things that I want to talk about. Again, this, I guess, is going to be a P, uh, PSA GAC. Um, first of all, 
don't trade on margin. Don't trade on margin. Don't buy on margin. You know, it's it's literally taking a loan from the investment house at, you know, four or five. Actually, you can probably get it as low as two, three, four percent interest. Um, don't do it. Do not do it. If you're trading, make sure you're not trading on margin unless you really know what you're doing. If you really know what you're doing, then, you know, obviously you're not going to listen to me anyway. But if you are new, amateur, you know, don't have a whole lot of experience, don't trade on margin. Um, Because, you know, if you're trading or buying on margin that is at a 2% interest rate, then, you know, you really want to at least be making three or four percent so that you're not just breaking even because you are paying interest. Um, I mean, obviously, ideally, you're making closer to six percent if you're paying two percent interest. Um, But don't do it. If you're new, if you're an amateur, if you are 20 years old and don't have a real job yet, um, do not trade on margin, please. I am begging you. Uh, you're going to end up like there's no, there really are no guarantee get rich quick schemes with the market unless you're involved with people that are pumping and dumping stocks and that is a federal crime. So there's no, you know, a lot of people have said to me, Hey, I want to get into the market and I want to make, you know, a quick 10 grand. That's really not how it works. Um, you can't really plan that. Uh, You can make educated guesses and predictions, but there is no surefire way to make a quick 10 grand uh, unless you're putting in a million dollars and you can make a 10 grand, you know, quick 10 grand real quick. Um, Obviously, um, in my other videos, we've talked about you have to gauge your success or failure for that matter on percentages, not dollar value. Um, anyway, so long and short of it to say, please, for the love of all that is holy and sacred, do not trade on margin. Um, obviously there's a lot more, maybe not a lot more, but there's probably more going on for this poor young kid that, uh, killed himself as a result of what he thought was, a hundred and seventy thousand dollar deficit um margin trading uh the investment house which is robin hood uh is not releasing the information on the account uh by the way this was a mistake going nice sisters against uh this gg droids team i wanted to see if i could save padme gr for something else and i chanced this but doesn't work out um so robin hood isn't releasing the details of the account so we're not exactly sure if that hundred and seventy thousand dollars was or is in fact losses or if it's something else and the uh very young amateur trader was mistaken um because one (coughs) rose no this fucking dog hears the noise in the hallway and she starts barking sorry guys uh yeah one would think that even an amateur investment house like robin hood um because that's who they focus on they focus on amateur retail investors uh that's their bread and butter uh i would assume one would assume that they have you know certain safety measures in place so that someone uh isn't borrowing that much money on margin to trade because, I mean, you have to verify. From what I understand, I've never traded on a margin. I've never done margin ever, nor will I ever. My understanding is it's just like, uh, it's very similar to a credit card. You know, you have to show how much money uh, you're depositing every month or quarter or whatever the case is to justify how much money you can borrow on margin. Um, Because to, you know, give or to loan a 20-year-old kid that's, that was or is, was in college, uh, doesn't have a career yet, 
uh, to let that 20-year-old kid without a job or career borrow $170,000 on margin uh, seems irresponsible. So we're going to give Robin Hood the benefit of the doubt uh, and assume that that is in fact not the case, that there are proper safety measures um, in, at, at Robin Hood that would prevent something like that. Uh, so we are going to go with uh, it probably more likely being a very inexperienced um, amateur trader that assumed the worst and did not seek help or advice or even clarification. While it is unfortunate, of course, you never see anyone want to, you never want to see someone kill themselves. Um, I mean, yeah, I feel like that this that whole situation could have been avoidable, but uh, still underscores the importance of not trading on margin unless you are at least a semi-pro trader, uh, have been doing it a long time, have a proven track record uh, that you know how to trade or invest properly because it's it's not it's uh, I, yeah I, I loathe. Uh, margin trading. Uh, so going back to the broader market theme, um, I did get a question from someone recently on my Luke video. Uh, do I think the market is frothy? Uh, yes, I do think the market is frothy. I do think that the market is um, very expensive, overbought right now. Um, valuations are are more expensive here than they were pre-corona obviously that's not really a surprise because uh, most revenues and gdp is bottomed out um but that being said i while i do think that uh, an uh really a bona fide pullback is possible maybe not imminent but certainly still very possible uh, we did have a, a little bit of a pullback. The Dow hit 27,000 again. Uh, not that you should be really giving a shit what the Dow does. You really should care more about what the S&P does. Um, but we did pull back some from those levels. I think it was two weeks ago already. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, you know, a 10% correction from the recent highs would be healthy, welcome. Um, but I also think it's more important that the markets rebalance a bit. Um, I have said on here many times, a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's true. Uh, that's true for the economy, the broader economy. It's true for the markets. It's you know true for the different levels of uh, socioeconomic class. But <clears throat> there are certain sectors that have no earthly business being as high as they are even with a little bit of a pullback that we had within the last couple of weeks uh, airlines most notably and cruise lines even if reopening goes swimmingly which it already is pointing to not airlines and cruise lines are not going to be able to fill their vessels or planes to capacity until there is a vaccine and that vaccine has been widely distributed. So why airlines and cruise lines are up as high and in some cases higher than many other stocks and sectors, um, I don't understand that. I know that the Saudis have pumped a lot of money into the cruise lines. Um, that's fine, that's their prerogative, but that does not make cruise lines profitable for the near term. Um, yeah, I want to go on a cruise, don't get me wrong. Bella and I want very badly to go on a Southern Caribbean cruise to Aruba, Curacao. Um, yeah, I would love to do that. I love cruises, but I don't see people um, wanting to take that risk. Uh, certainly not the older people 
who cruise a lot. Um, I mean, Holland America is like 90% septuagenarians or older. Um, Obviously, uh, Carnival, not so much. Carnival is your party cruise. But then at the same time, on a party cruise, you're all on top of one another. Uh, Do you really want to be on top of one another while Corona is still out there and there is no vaccine? Um, Not me. Um, I'd be apprehensive about going on a crew, an old person cruise on Holland America. And I honestly love Holland America. Holland America is my favorite cruise line because I love never having to fight for a seat anywhere I go because A, everyone has their own walkers and little scooters and whatever so they don't they're already sitting and they're all asleep after 8 p.m on the boat so i love having the boat to myself but at the same time i'd be a little apprehensive about going on a holland america line because you know god forbid i'm a carrier i don't want to kill some poor old people um because they're very susceptible to diseases in general, but certainly corona. So I, I, know, I don't know why the cruise lines and the airlines... I mean, you're in pretty cramped conditions in really all of them. Um, so even when they come back, they're going to be at you know maybe half capacity. And I don't know how profitable that is going to be for either sector. So I do think that the market is due for some rebalancing. Um, Then again, the market has really defied logic for the past three months. So it could stay like this. Um, I think there is a lot of value out there still, most notably in financials. But then other side of it is if the second wave that appears likely is really, really bad and we have to shutter. We're not going to shut down the whole economy again, but certainly certain places are going to shut down. Um, The banks, the financials, they can't make any money because the interest rates are at a probably, well, maybe not a record low, but certainly at the lowest that they can reasonably be short of negative rates, which luckily Fed Chair Powell has said we are not doing anytime soon because that's retarded um yeah if you have the stomach to go into the banks and if you have the stomach to watch them drop a little bit because they very well might i think your super long-term benefits um outweigh the short-term losses or risks uh if you're buying healthy well, <laughs> Corona notwithstanding, healthy banks. Um, J.P. Morgan is one of my favorites. Um, regional banks. The only regional bank that I like, although I do not own it anymore, is PNC because it's a regional bank that's not like any other regional bank. Um, historically, they have been excellent. Um, the only reason why I sold out of my PNC was back in, I don't know, 2011 with the London Whale. I sold out of my PNC and doubled down on JP Morgan when JP Morgan crashed out. I did very well there. Um, all right, that's it for now.